I've been helping my parents get ready for an upcoming move and once again I come up with that that problem that I frequently get which is how to handle all those old family photos that we have in our family and that ultimately I get well today's the day today's the day that I am going to start tackling the scanning and the digitization of my old family photos and slides that I have come across as I have pre helped prepare family members over the last couple years get ready for moves. Hey there, if we haven't met before, I'm Lisa with Are You My Cousin? And this YouTube channel is designed to help you find your ancestors, grow your family tree, but not be overwhelmed in the process. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you are in the right place. Now, before I jump right into sharing with you all the ins and outs of how I manage my old family photographs and keep them safe for future generations. I do want to mention that today's video is sponsored by PhotoMine app, and I will be sharing with you more about them a little bit later in this video. Now in my family, it is no surprise that when anybody cleans out a closet or an entire house, I become the recipient of many of the old family photos, including not just the photographs themselves, but including photo albums, old slides people come across, as I've helped my parents prepare for this move, I've come across old family photos that we had forgotten, even found some old slides in boxes that were completely forgotten, by my, even by my parents. And while I've been a bit overwhelmed with trying to manage getting them digitized and safe, keeping them safe for future generations, I always kept thinking, someday, someday I'm going to finally sit down and get everything digitized. I'm going to start this project, get it organized, and I'll be good. Well, guess what? Today's the day. I'm going to get started on this project, and I'm going to show you how I have come up with for managing these family photos, how to digitize them, how I prepare them for safekeeping, as well as make them available for sharing with the rest of my family. So let's start at the beginning here. Why do we want to preserve our old family photos? Why do we want, once we have the photos themselves, why do we want feel the how do we preserve them for future generations? Because we know a lot of these old family photographs, they're fading, they are perhaps not stored well over the years, so they are deteriorating. And we want to be able to share those family images with the future generations. So certainly one of the reasons I want to, to do this project is to preserve my old family photographs. I want to protect them. But also by digitizing them, I will be able to make them available and share them with my family, not just my immediate family members, but cousins and other family members who are actually have their own direct ancestors in these photographs as well. And one other reason that I wanted to make sure I really had a good process down for scanning is not just scanning here in my home office, but being able to have that ability to scan when I visit other relatives because I have found many relatives are, are very willing to share their old family photographs with me, but they don't want me to take them away from their home. And, and I get that. I don't want anybody taking my photographs out of my home. but. I want to be able to scan them and so I have come up with a way to not only scan in my office but scan on the go as well. Now if you're thinking Lisa I've got a whole pile of photographs that I need to scan and I need to get organized and I need to preserve for those future generations be sure and hit that like button and let me know. Let me know I'm not the only one who has procrastinated on this project. Okay so let's get down to how to scan. Now that you have some options when it comes to scanning old family photos and I'll tell you why I chose what I chose. Now you can certainly do it use a flatbed scanner at home. You don't want to run your old family photos through an automatic feeder. You can use a flatbed scanner. Now I find this, I have done this when I have one or two, but I find this to be time consuming and requiring a lot more on the back end for me to um, label them and get and get them uploaded to the right place. So I tend not to do that very often, but it is certainly an option. Now, another option would be to send them off, send all of my photographs or all of my negatives and, and movies off to a company that actually does that. So there are companies out there that, you know, they send you the box, you put all your things that you want digitized in them and preserved and they, they will do that for you. Now, I choose not to do that because I'm not comfortable sending these old family photographs out of my home like that. And so that's just personal preference, but I've chosen not to do that. Now, the other option would be to use your cell phone, quite frankly. Now, cell phones have come a long way since I started genealogy research. They, the apps have come a long way. So I used to just take a digital photograph, guys. And, and while it worked, it worked until it didn't because I'm not a very skilled photographer. And so therefore, I, I would get the images, but they weren't crisp. They weren't clear. They... You know, I'd always come out, oh, well, I wish I'd taken this one or I wish I'd done better with that particular photograph or that lighting didn't come out right. So now you can't see the photograph, all of those things, guys. So that's not a great option either. 
what I really wanted was a good, basically scanner, portable scanner. And that's what apps allow me to do. That's what I, so I chose the PhotoMine app because it is a portable, it is an app on my phone. It turns it into a portable scanner and has a lot of really cool features as well. The other thing that was really important to me is speed. So oftentimes when I have this large project like I have in my closet, um, I have hundreds and hundreds of photos, guys, of old family photos. If When I have this large project, I need speed. I, I don't have time. Honestly, I'm not probably going to take the time to sit at my flatbed scanner and feed them one by one by one. I want something that's good, a good scanner. I want something that will allow me to do this quickly and get them organized quickly as well. Now, the other reason that I chose the PhotoMine app is because I also have old photograph albums and old scrapbooks that I've acquired over the years from various family members as well as ones that I've created on, of my own. And so the, this particular app, the PhotoMine app, does allow me to take a to scan an entire album page and it will crop out and enhance and pull out each extract, basically each photograph from that page. So maybe there are four photographs on that album page and I can do it with one scan. I can capture all four of them individually as well. So I'll show you how, to, how I did that as well. But that was why I chose this particular app. So I'm going to actually show you how now and walk you through and let you kind of peek over my shoulder to see how I use PhotoMime app for these. When possible, I try to organize my photographs ahead of time. So I typically will order, order them in either perhaps it's around a certain event, perhaps it's around a certain family member or a certain family grouping. But honestly, if I'm on the fly, I just take them as they come and I can scan them and then I'll get them organized on the back end. Here's a pro scanning tip for you. If you have the option, try to set up your scanning area next to a window with natural light. That's going to help you get a better scan. Isn't this a great picture of my grandparents that I found? So I'm going to scan it so that I can preserve it as well as share it with the rest of the family. So I'm over here at my desk and I have pulled up my PhotoMine app. And I'm going to hit the scan button down here at the bottom. There we go. Line it up. And there we go. So it's going to do its magic. It cropped it. It's enhanced it a bit for me. And then I can open that up. And there we have it. So I can add photo details. I can click that. I can add in um, their names. I could tell a story about it if I wanted to. I could share it and upload it to my Google Photos, which is typically what I do to share it with other family members. Now that I have the photos scanned, I can actually sharpen it a little bit if I make it a little bit better if I would like to see it. I can hit the diamond and it applies what they call their Sharpie feature. And this just takes in the blurry faces, the faces that are a little faded and kind of crisp them up a little bit. So it does take a moment or two to do. And you can see here it's going to work its magic on my grandfather. And it's magic on my grandmother, who apparently has her eyes closed. Now we, now that we've sharpened it up, we can see that. And so I have a better version of the photograph there that I can share out. Here's a photograph that I found. You can see it's quite faded. I believe it's of, I think it's of my great grandfather or my great great grandfather, but we're going to find out in a minute. So I want to preserve that one to the best of my ability. All right. So I have this photograph of who I think is my great grandfather and the dog. There's always a dog in the family photos. I'm going to scan that one as well. So here I am in my PhotoMine app again. I'm going to hit the scan button there and I'm going to, I'm going to take a scan. I'm going to hit the big red button for three seconds in the photo album, you can see that I have a cleaner version. It's not a great photograph, obviously. There, it's, it's quite, it has deteriorated quite a bit, but I still have other options. Now, if you see this, this little button, right, this little kind of corner bent down, I can actually now scan the back of the photograph and it will be attached to that photograph. And this is wonderful for family photos. There we go. So we have the name there. I can keep that. And so now when I go back in to look at it, if I tap that corner, it flips it over and tells me who it is. That is a fabulous feature for any family historian. And that way we're no longer having to take separate photographs of front and back and hope we get them attached and labeled correctly. Okay, so I am going to be scanning this lovely little slide that I found. I found this box of slides. They are of my, turns out my parents' wedding. And so this was the coolest thing find ever. I want to preserve it. So I'm going to go into my iPad this time. I wanted to show you that you can do this on your iPad as well. I'm going to hit scan 
And over here on the right, I'm going to choose slide and I'm going to hit the button and scan it. And there we go. So now I have a copy of my parents coming out of the church and I can do share that with the rest of the family. Again, I can enhance it if I wish to. I can add to the story down here and I can um, then share it with other family members. Here is a fantastic photo album that I have from my uncle who was in the Second World War. He was a great, I, I like to think of him as the original scrapbooker, but this is his photo album and part of his scrapbook. And I want to show you how I can use Photo Mine to actually take one scan of this page, but get all of the photos. So here again, I'm on the Photo Mine app. I hit scan. I'm going to turn it on its side and I am going to push the button. All right, so it is cropping and doing all its magical stuff. There's picture number one. Picture number two, apparently they caught a shark off the ship that day. There's another one. It was a popular day. And I can go into the album then, and as you can see, it took all of the photographs for me and put them in an album. And I took one scan, but I got all of the photographs there. So I think that's a perfect way to do it. Then if I wanted to share this, say, with a cousin or another family member, I can um, save it to my Google Photos, which is what I typically do. And then I share it from my Google Photos. So I actually have a few negatives in my collection. And as you can see, they're very, very faded. And I really have no clue who is in this particular one and what it's going to turn out. So I'm going to use the light box for this from Photomine and go into my app. I'm going to hit scan. And I'm going to go over here to the right. And I'm going to Switch it off to negatives. There we go. So we can see there that we have a gentleman. I hit the button and look at there, guys. Now I have an image of that gentleman. I am, I'm not 100% sure, guys, but this could be my grandfather. So I'm actually going to share this out and send it to my dad or to one of the um, distant cousins to see if we can get this gentleman identified because I have a suspicion this is my grandfather. So how cool is that? I had no idea what that photograph actually looked like. Now I could sharpen it and I could color it. I have, what I have found is that when I sharpen some of these that are so grainy to begin with, the sharpening feature isn't quite as clear and maybe doesn't give the best results, but that's okay. At this point, I just am so thankful to have the photograph of this gentleman. Now, when I scan my old family photos, I typically go ahead and do all my scanning in one fell swoop. And then I go back into the app and do any edits that I want to do, whether it's colorization, whether it's the sharpening of the features and that type of thing. It just, I find I'm faster and it's more efficient for me to do the scanning first, kind of batch that scanning process and then batch kind of the editing process and the adding of tags or adding of labels or any extra things I want to add to that particular photograph. Now, I also find that being able to do the editing and the batch editing of these photographs that I've scanned on my computer is actually a little bit quicker for me than to do it on my phone. The phone is certainly quick, but I like the larger view. So I actually log into my PhotoMine account on my laptop and that's where I can do actually a couple extra things such as sharpen an entire image as well as I have the option there to remove any glare that might have occurred when I was doing the original scanning. Perhaps I was too close to a window or different lights. Okay, now let's talk about sharing these old family photographs. Now, I think sometimes that we often as researchers tend to think, okay, yes, I'm going to share this information or I'm going to share these family photos with so-and-so, with my brothers, with my siblings, with my cousins someday. Well, someday has a tendency not to show up, right? But this is someday because remember, someday is here. So we want to make sure we're going to go ahead and share these photographs. So when it comes to sharing your photos from PhotoMine, you actually have a couple options to do this. The one that I typically do is I go ahead and save my photos from the PhotoMine app into my Google Photos. I actually have the two connected. And so I can very quickly and easily save them to Google Photos. And from there, I do my sharing with the other family members. You can also use the photo share option on the app, which will send you a code and allow that you can then share with other family members or other individuals you want to share that photo album with, and they can access it then. I know you're gonna ask, so yes, PhotoMine is a subscription service, but I enjoy using them because I, number one, have access to all of my photos across all of my devices. It is quick and it is easy and I get a quality scan. And that's the utmost importance to me when it comes to preserving my family photos. I also can know that they are backed up, they are backed up in the cloud. And so I know that they are safe. I'll have a link in the description below to PhotoMine if you'd like to check that out for yourself. Now learn more about old family photos in the video on your screen now.